Alright guys, Hatch Crown back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Some drama brewing at Major 2 was about the snaking situation, which is now boiling over between Los Angeles Thieves and Atlanta Phase, the two finalists. We know that Selium kind of brought this into common knowledge within the community over the last couple of years, but now Draza is arguably the premium Cobra within the scene. Octane defense Draza, though, says that Selium is the problem, but a BZ from Phase seems to disagree. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate thought this is pretty funny as well starting out the video here from Selium. also though some drama we've got to discuss on the cheating side of the equation cheating is always a topic every so often in the cod scene and last night there was a lot of pros getting involved in this discussion over this particular player crafty so a few days ago i didn't actually see this clip at the time but um shotzi gifted 100 subs for 500 dollars to this uh well i think it was to tupac i'm guessing after crafty clutched an incredible one versus four so i guess i'll bring this up on the big screen for you guys here this guy is crafty one versus four gets this first kill and um okay there's nothing you can look at this clip and say he's super dodgy he does pre in this a bit much but in fairness you can understand the guy with challenge okay this is against pro loot tj actually yeah let's have a look how this goes so yeah crafty one versus two this guy turned out to be cheating a bit and obviously okay he's got 15 seconds left to defend the bomb obviously at this point in the rounds you can definitely clutch this one versus two goes gets one kill gets the second kill and unfortunately shots he has to give away an entire 500 dollars in gifted subs as a result of clutching this 1v4. Turns out though, I'm sure Shotzi might want to refund after it's now been emerged that Crafty was actually cheating and it emerged yesterday this is what was going on. So via CMG Brett here not apparently, not only hacking in the game, but was hacking it since PC COD came out. He had 20 plus 30 day hacking subscriptions. I cannot get the screenshot because he removed my access to his PC before I could. So I'm guessing they did like a PC check on this guy and he hoped he'd get away with it and then all of a sudden yeah, it was quite clear that he was getting hard exposed. So this is pretty wild, right? To think about this guy has been running at tournaments on CFG for, I mean, since PC COD came out years ago, like having 20, 30 day subscriptions, like, you know, that's at least two years, let's say, of hacking that he's been doing in the scene has made a lot of money in said tournaments, in search and destroy tournaments, let's say, and has now been exposed. Now, it's really frustrating, right? The fact that, that the, you know, the anti-cheat just doesn't work at all, right? If this guy's been hacking for two years and has not been caught once, it's a problem. Problem. Now, um, of course, you know, he's probably one of these kind of smart hackers, right? Okay, they're obviously all idiots to a certain extent, but some people do it blatantly. Some people will just turn on the walls for a fraction of a second just to get one piece of information at a crucial moment that will swing the tides potentially in your favor. And um, I guess that's what this guy's been doing for years. And now, thankfully, he's finally been exposed and caught for doing this. Now, the mad thing to me is you look at his elite um, his CMG account here. He has made almost a hundred grand in winnings over the last several years. This is his win loss played at, you know, 17th rank on the site. And I know there was some discussion later on about the fact that, you know what, can you really blame these guys? Because in S&D tourneys right now, it's cheat or be cheated on, which, you know, maybe there's an element to that, but I still don't think it <laughs> absolves responsibility, of course. But still, 100 grand in winnings this guy's earned, cheating people out of money by using hacks. Like, um, it's, it's absurd, right? I don't exactly know. I guess his money is going to get taken away. I don't really know what happens here, right? Like, can CMG say these winnings were done illegally and therefore we want the money back we want to give them to the actual winners like you know is he a hundred grand in debt like i don't know what happens as a result of this right maybe there maybe nothing right maybe he gets away with it but uh, he's been doing it for long enough and obviously he goes on to say this if you're not pro you should be console so um i guess talking about the fact that pc cod is easy to cheat and then he says i got a long list of presumably other hackers and see the old pals that you know cheaters watching cra well crafty get caught and then seeing him tweet out he has a long list of other cheaters so yeah we'll We'll see if that comes out over the coming days. That happened before. Was it the start of Vanguard? There was some cheater that got caught and then said, yeah, guys, I'm going to expose all my friends that also cheat. Man, what an absolute mess and what a sad state of affairs the, certainly the search and destroy scene is in. Given that I remember very fondly a few years ago, the Black Ops 3 days with Nick Merckx and everything, like the scene was absolutely popping back then for search and destroy when it was on console. And nowadays on PC, I mean, man, the cheaters are just absolutely rampant. And even as Rambi Bambi says here, I'm disgusted. I can't believe this clown has been hacking. And uh, apparently he's been around for a while. Abizi says, I called it instantly last year when I played him in the Vanguard S&D 8. And I was told I was tweaking. So, um, I mean, yeah, this is the thing, right? The frustrating part as well about this whole saga is that players that are actually legitimate therefore get kind of accused of cheating more often than they would do otherwise, right? The fact that Abizi saw this guy and thought, wow, he's got to be cheating, but he was actually right. It means that whenever any pro has a feeling of, okay, this guy's a bit dodgy, immediately the assumption is the guy must be cheating. So, and even if he's not right, and he might be perfectly legitimate, 
legitimate, which is super frustrating for many legit players that cheaters that then get exposed are actually just ruining the scene for not just themselves. But we'll leave it there on the cheating stuff on the like actual hacks in the game stuff, but there's other cheating discussions around potentially snaking in the game. We know that Search and Destroy wins championships. We know that FaZe didn't even lose a Search and Destroy that event at Major 2 in Boston to go on to win the entire thing. But snaking has been a key talking point since really this game came out. Of course, like Snake has been around for years. But back in the day when it was first prevalent in Infinite Warfare, we're talking 2017, the pro said, you know what? This snaking thing is ridiculous. This is, you know, you go just about prone, sprint forward, stand up again behind the head glitch. Now, it's funny really because this used to only be done behind uh, behind cover, right? To get free information, the other guy can barely kill you. If you've ever had it happen to you or you've seen it in a match, then you'll know how you know, egregious it is to abuse. Now, the funny thing is to me that because it kind of messes up the camera angles for the opponents, players are now doing it standing out in the open, not even behind cover anymore. They'll just stand in the open and just snake up and down in the air. And, you know, it'll still potentially give them some degree of advantage. So, I mean, man, what an absolute messy state of affairs it is. But still, we know that the two prime offending teams probably are FaZe and Thieves. Selium has always been kind of the classic example of this. He's always going to be on the thumbnails when we talk about snaking ends. I think for good reason, to be honest. Back in the Cold War days, it really was kicking off. Teams like Thieves at the time, where Slasher was on that team at the time, now he's on FaZe. And Kenny, of course, still on Thieves. We're getting really frustrated about Selium just snaking all the time. And, um, and none of the other pros really wanted to abuse it at the time. And there was even some talking points that, um, you know, teams were trying to, like, blacklist FaZe from scrims for Selium doing this. And apparently his teammates even told him, like, hey, Sel, can you please stop this? And Sel was like, look, I don't care. You can do it two phase up, all this stuff. So nowadays, the teams have kind of just said, well, you know what? If Sel's going to do it, I guess we've got to do it. And the entire league is abusing it. And it's frustrating to watch. Most certainly, there was even some booze ringing around at the major when we had a bit of a snake off in a gunfight, right? Which I thought was kind of cool to see because it's not good for the fans. The fans don't like it. Neither the pro, like the majority of pros don't like it, but they're kind of forced to do it because some players do it. Now, the premium offender back in the day was Selium. Arguably at the moment, the prime offender is Draza from the Los Angeles Thieves. And this is where Faye is getting annoyed about Draza because people are now saying that he's the King Cobra, right, in the league. I mean, it's kind of the battle of the snakes nowadays. So, which I think might be justified, right? Draza, we know that he was even getting, before even the snaking discussion was big, there was talk about the smoke drama because at the start of the game when smokes were allowed, Draza's been the guy to throw them in a certain way to abuse one ways and people don't like that and all this. So Faiz are kicking off at Draza about this and Abizi's like, look Draza, I can snake too and all this stuff. Just completely egregious kind of abuse of the movement mechanics. But then Octane comes in and says, you know what, it's not Draza's fault, it's Selium's fault for making this normal within the community. Up. I think he went deep. Nah, I'm, I'm just in the corner. He could be back door. Watch P1, P1, P1 already. Back door. I see them. Nice. Need another one. I'm gonna P1, 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 Alec. P1, Alec. I need one in the back. I need one back up. Have P1, P1. Back up. Dead. P2, I have P2. Lower. Lower. Two connector, connector. Connector still there. Single, 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 single. Going war, war to trees, trees. Okay. Still there, I think. I'm flanking the guy, trees. Top dead. Nice. I'm my lower. I'm taking my lower. I have your head. One more P1 on me. Are they in the back? Yeah, one more front. Matt, I can sing too, bitch. Go back door, yeah, back door on me, back door on me. He ran out. Once, once dub. B2 dead. Dub on me, then. Get away down on the stairs, I like this. He's getting snaked by Tyler BZ. I think his teammate just absolutely sent him the Yoni land with that Semtex. Tyler's criminal for that. He said so so Tyler's absolutely criminal for that. He just snaked him into the gunfight. Oh! Oh my god, shots you lost full, bro. Nah, nah, this is hell. <laughs> That's <laughs> hell. Oh, see, wait, hold on. Oh, Are you you? Can you do some yeah. demonic right now? He just snaked oh, out of oh, Zach. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, he's dash punching. Nah, Tyler's frying. He's what dash the punching, hell? Sam. He's dash punching. Oh, nah, he just extra snaked Zach for sure. That was some vicious sakes. That was some, that was a vendetta snake chat. Nah, this guy's moving differently, bro. Mm -mm. Snaking Zach does it the most in the league. Don't complain about it. For sure, buddy. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's so funny that, that people attribute Zach because he's the best at it to being the, the problem. It's so funny. It's so funny. I love it. People actually think that MC didn't ruin the league with snaking, but just because Zach does it more than anyone else, that like Zach's the problem. For sure, guys. <laughs> For sure. <laughs>
So who's on the right side of this in your guys' opinion, right? I did think this is pretty funny from Abizi, to be honest, when he just snakes the living daylights out of uh, Draza here off this head glitch. And Octane was reacting to this, of course, like, oh my god, he just completely did that to him. I mean, Abizi was making this eight match look like pubs, to be honest. But um, this is the thing. Some pros, the pros can abuse this, but um, they wouldn't. They try, like, okay, there's some degree of integrity, right? Where if you don't abuse it, then there is an element of you actually playing the game how it's intended to be played. Whereas some pros will use everything to their advantage and you can kind of understand why it's difficult to stop this right because what is a snake what is just you know of course a bz's weak here right so maybe he's just using it to like uh, ensure that he doesn't take any more damage and all this type of stuff so it's always difficult to say and at the end of the day your game five round 11 world championship grand final or game you know seven round 11 world championship grand final and you're on a head glitch and the other guy isn't are you snaking it for the dub regardless of if it's ga'd or not and the pros have said oh you really shouldn't do it you're probably snaking it for the dubs. <laughs> That's just how it goes. So this is the thing. Obviously, Draza was getting called out here by Abizi, but um, Octane's opinion is, well, actually, it's Selium's fault. It's not Draza's fault for abusing this. It's Selium's fault for starting it and making it become acceptable. It's kind of acceptable. And now other players, you know, we've seen the likes of Afro abuse it a lot, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, there is maybe a small skill gap here. Some pros, like, if you compare Afro snaking to, like, accuracy snaking, there's probably a little bit of a difference there. But Draza does do it a lot and that's where a lot of this frustration has kind of boiled over from. So yeah, in terms of your thoughts, who's in the right tier? I know that a lot of, uh, you know, the fan base in general isn't too fond often of Selium or Draza for such shenanigans. But um, of course, you know, Abizi's going to be defending Selium and calling out Draza, and then Octane's going to be calling out Selium and defending Draza. So it is how it is. But uh, it's kind of funny that these two teams actually turned out to be the two teams of the grand finals of the major. So maybe they're onto something in the way that they decide to play. Let's talk about, before we close out the video though, some top SMG players in the game right now. Thought it was quite interesting to look at what Ben J. Nassim did. He put a list together the other day of all-star SMGs going down the tiers. Now, Ben J. Nassim's tier list, I think, is a little bit interesting. Jesus, where is this <laughs> Where is this guy bomb going here or this uh, missile from Shotzi? Well, he, oh my god, he can't believe it. he killed himself. That is fantastic stuff. So, um, anyway, this is the tier maker that Ben J. Nassim came up with. So, Capsule, of course, is brand new. His needs work category is Exceed, Joe Deceives, and Prolute. With Havoc, that I feel like Havoc is you know, I, I didn't. I must admit, I didn't listen fully to Ben Genesim's reasoning here, but I would say that Havoc is probably better than he's getting given credit for in this particular list. Now, I must say the tiers that he does here, the All Stars, the Impact Players, the Gap Fillers. To me, it's just using words where like letters will do perfectly well, and I'm, I'm sure that Ben doesn't really want to put people in the C tier or the D tier, right? But at the end of the day, like uh, that's basically what these equate to, because like to me, Havoc is probably in terms of like an Impact player. Havoc is an impact player but does that mean he's an a tier smg like probably not right so i don't know i would just do like s a b c whatever and honestly the s tier nowadays is like to me the s tier like you've got c b a right and then s is like the fact that it's s in the first place and not like a plus or whatever like that is a completely different level if you're an s tier team you are significantly better than everyone else so you know there's an even i think even crowder said that he doesn't even consider face to be an s tier team right now which maybe is justified but also for players i think it's the same thing where certain players like there's only a select few that can be S tier like out of all the SMGs in the league there can be maybe two or three that are S tier in my opinion so that's not exactly what Ben Genesim's done here which is understandable but I think there's some different levels like to me the absolute S tier of SMGs right now is Abizi it's Hydra and um and I don't know who else I'm putting in there right maybe I'm putting Simp in there but uh you know like I want two or three SMGs in my S tier right now like I think Afro is very close but not quite there I think Pred at the end of the day Pred is incredible, but, you know, he is part of a team that just went 0-12 in search and destroy. So there's got to be some criticism level there, even if Pred um, individually was still doing very well in search and destroy. Same thing, of course, applies to Sib. And um, I think just a lot of people were looking at this and saying maybe the most faded pick was the Asim in the All-Stars tier, because, okay, maybe you look at the first couple of weeks of the season, maybe Asim is an All-Star. But to me, with the way London have been going, and Asim individually wasn't anywhere near as strong at Major 2, and even in the Major 2 qualifiers and all this, like, I don't see how that's justified to me. But I appreciate that it is far easier to criticize a list than it is to actually make a good one from the ground up. So I'll give Ben Genesee definitely his credit here. And maybe at some point, if uh, the season gets particularly slow in the offseason sometime, we'll put together something like this of my own. But very much into your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.